Gesuiti uh, came out of the Jesuit order and later on died. This Francisco Yalix, when the Pope was elected, he was forced to uh, say that everything he had written or stated earlier was not true and that the Pope was completely innocent. But this is not the case. Pope Francis was actively involved in this uh, situation of, the, of these uh, two priests for six months, arrested and tortured, and actually he even went to visit them during these six months uh, at this place called the Navy School of Mechanics, uh, which uh, is uh, there in Buenos Aires, where they were held. And he basically didn't do anything for them. In the end, the Vatican eventually intervened and they were released. But this demonstrates to you that this Pope really has a lot of skeletons in the closet. And he's definitely no saint as they want to portray now in the U.S. I mean, it's sickening the level of propaganda that they're pulling off these days with, uh, I mean, John Biden on the side crying and also the other <laughs> guy, John Berner, the same. I mean, this is completely ridiculous. I mean... Even for us here in Italy to see the show yesterday at the White House, it was like watching something out of a Walt Disney movie. We, even yourself pointed out on the music with the t t t t. I mean, it was like literally. And then there was, <laughs> yes, and then there was the product placement for Fiat. But Fiat is not anymore an Italian company. Fiat Chrysler now is a company that doesn't even have uh, anymore any headquarters. It's multinational. It's been moved officially since last year outside of Italian territory, so they have nothing to do with Italy. Uh, Agnelli, who was uh, uh, one of the dynasty's most important persons, and now he died for a few years and left in the hands of this Elkan family. Well, uh, Agnelli was a best friend with uh, David Rockefeller. I mean, we are talking here some very powerful people behind the whole thing. So, of course, there is product placement, uh, and it's, it's obvious to, to all of us. It's a giant, huge promoting. corporate rollout. So when we come back... I want to get an answer to that question. you got great audio now. Leo Zagami, the consummate Vatican insider. Why are they making their move right now? Is it because they're strong or because they're weak? Who runs the Catholic Church now? Is this even the Catholic Church? I mean, who is this specter group? March. David Knight was on with us via Skype from D.C. about to follow the Pope to New York, readdresses the U.N. And then from there to Philly with Jakari Jackson. We'll have that throughout the weekend. And he was really upset because he was watching different talking heads in the hotel room, and they were just all saying, it's not political, it's good. You're not allowed to criticize the Pope because he's not political. See, he gets political big time. I mean, really hardcore globalist, hardcore eugenics agenda. We're talking about a billion dead in a decade if these carbon taxes go in. I'm not exaggerating. That's a conservative number. I have nauseous levels of empathy for the third world when I think about this. It'd be like knowing they're going to you know, kill a kid across town today at noon and I can't stop it. See, your brain can handle one kid getting killed, and by handle it, it can think about it so you get sick. When I say imagine a two-year-old being raped in a dungeon, they're going to be killed in one hour, you get physically sick if you have empathy. Imagine hundreds of millions of kids. Your brain can't even wrap itself around that. I know mine can't. And what's weird is I'm intellectually sitting back going, come on, you're exaggerating. And then I pull back and I go, no, those are Lord Moncton's numbers and other numbers. And you know the numbers. It's a death sentence for a billion people. And then I see some guy in his huge jet with all these guards saying he's against wealth and, and shooting his mouth off about helping poor people by trying to wreck the industrialized West while stopping the third world from industrializing because he wants a giant horde of idiots to follow him. Pope Francis is a bigger threat than the Soviet Union because the Soviet Union was despicable. It was corrupt. It was evil. It was falling apart. But evil's biggest trick is getting good people to follow it. And I just got to say, I've grown up around Catholics my whole life. They are great, funny, nice, hardworking, smart people. And they're not hypocrites either. I found them to be Christian people that love God, but they won't get on you if you're drinking a beer. I like Catholics, the Catholics I've known. And that's why I, I've not attacked them. This Pope is a sickening piece of trash. And that's all I'm saying. And, and people need to turn against him big time. I don't care what the Jesuits do to me or what type of stuff they try to pull. I, I could care less. <clears throat> they tried to stop William Ayers from bringing those Bibles in from New York, and you saw how that worked in Texas.
So I'm not worried about any of it. I got God on my side. The God I follow has the keys, the temporal and spiritual power, not this puppet. And that's all I have to say on the subject. I'm going to go back to Leo Zagami here in a minute, but this is really tearing me up because the fact that they got a pope out in the open calling for world government and carbon taxes and saying don't be so obsessed with abortion and not saying a word about the baby harvesting, this is just the beginning. And by the way, it's Protestant churches are pushing gun control now, and all the government has taken over the churches. So my question to Mr. Zagami, we're going to go to him in a moment, is we know there's been infiltration groups. We know there's been factions wanting to run the Vatican. What, what is this faction running things now? Is there any Catholic church left? I know Leo grew up a Catholic, and I, and I want to get his take on that. And then we're going to take your phone calls at 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And a lot of folks are selfish. They'll say, I don't care if the stock market crashes. Well, the stock market affects you because it affects all the companies in the economy. Or I don't care if the Catholic Church is run by the New World Order. Well, I'm not a Catholic. Well, it's a billion people. You got like a billion, 300 million people that are Islamic. They're being radicalized. Now the Catholics are going to be radicalized in the leftist garbage. The leftists are allied with the radical Muslims. That's 2.3 billion people under New World Order control. Then you add the 800 million Protestants or whatever, always busy fighting with each other. You can really see how the evil is going to take over. 800 259-9231. I've had a lot of Catholic experts tell me the communists really took over in the 50s. We'll get Leo Zagami's quick answers to all this in a moment. So I want to move quick. We'll have him back up, obviously, in the future for an extended interview. Um, this, this broadcast is listener-supported. Um, we didn't meet our goal with the money bomb, but with satellites, closed captioning, reporters, flying people around, a million dollars is just enough to be able to know that we can operate for the next year at the current level and not destroy our small reserves that any organization should have. I intend to expend the reserves regardless because things are getting so serious. We're going to put all our energy into this and just just, just you know, hope and pray that it has the effect we think it will. Everything we've done has always been successful. Every launch has always been successful in different ways. And so in my gut, I can tell we are really reaching more people than ever. We see the numbers. And in my gut, I think this is going to be successful, so pray for us. But it's daily support that's needed, spreading the word, telling your friends and family about the broadcast, sharing videos, sharing clips, sharing articles, buying high-quality nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com, getting high-quality Patriot apparel to meet like-minded people and spread the word, 20% off the natural uh, great brain pill, brain force, the one to put out the super formula that was very affordable. Uh, we've got 20% off DNA force, our flagship product, just over-the-top high-quality one of the ingredients costs $40,000 a kilo in it. Uh, we've got child ease that naturally calms your children, but also gives them focus. Uh, that's back in. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2 is set to sell out the next week. It could be upwards of a month and a half before more comes in. A true game changer. We've got uh, Deep Cleanse. Uh, I thought that was sold out. Can you click on that? Or, or did it come back in? Because I, I, I knew Deep Cleanse sold out. I was on the verge of selling out. Point is, all those products are excellent. I want to thank you all for your support. It takes money to fly to Rome. It takes money to make these documentaries. It takes money to send our reporters to follow the Pope. It takes money to cover Bohemian Grove. It takes money to cover vaccine damage. And we really appreciate you getting high-quality products in a win-win while funding the very tip of the spear in the fight against the globalists. So InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. The subsite for the nutraceuticals is InfoWarsLife.com. Find the longevity products at InfoWarsHealth.com discounted. So whether it's the sleep aid, knockout, winter sun, uh, whether it is uh, high quality uh, Wake Up America coffee, uh, ancient defense is back in because the winter months are coming. It's all available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888 888- Two five three three one three nine. Okay, going back to Leo Zagami. Uh, Leo, we're going to talk about your books some before you leave as well. Some in English, some in Italian. Uh, but 
You've heard my questions. Just try to answer them because you really are an expert. Accurately predicted that they would put a Jesuit pope in, name the guy, one of two you thought it would be, that was a blackmail going on. That all came out in the news later. So you've been proven correct in spades over and over again. Uh, so briefly, tell us about yourself, how you woke up, then are they getting stronger, are they getting weaker, uh, who runs the Vatican? Well, actually, how I woke up, uh, you are uh, probably one of the reasons why in the year 2000, 2001, I started to wonder what was really going on behind the scenes. Because I didn't know that. Amongst the even amongst that, among the network of Masonic network and of other secret societies, when we saw the Bohemian Grove, it created a debate. I remember myself discussing in Lodge in London your documentary and actually facing some of the masters there and telling them, what is this? I mean, how is it possible that Tony Blair goes and participates in something like this or, or, or that world leaders are involved with something like this? And, and of course, uh, uh, this uh, inspiration that you gave me uh, at one point uh, put me in front of the reality of what I had uh, in, in these lodges, in these uh, secret societies that I was involved in, and I decided that I did no longer wanted to be involved, especially when I discovered some uh, of their secrets. Uh, of course, uh, the lower level never know what's going on at the upper levels. So it was by... The, the possibility of climbing suddenly this ladder that I was able to see that uh, it wasn't something I wanted to be uh, any longer uh, a participant with, uh, especially after the phone call I had once with uh, Marcinkus, uh, which was, uh, as you know, a very important uh, uh, bishop. He died uh, around nearly 10 years ago. Uh, who was in charge uh, and very much uh, in charge of the Vatican at the time of John Paul II, who the Italian actually government wanted to arrest, but the Vatican simply sent uh, to the U.S. This is what they do. They don't uh, get their people arrested. When uh, uh, last year uh, was asked there that the cardinal was arrested for pedophilia, they just picked him up and made him reside in the Vatican until he eventually died of his sickness a month ago. And... Uh, this is because they protect him, because, uh, of course, if this cardinal, who was part of the pedophilia ring that is running the Vatican, will talk, it will, it will put in trouble a lot of people, because uh, there is two factions. The main faction now is the Jesuit, who is working with the Mondialists uh, to uh, try to save the facade of the Catholic Church, and then there is the gay lobby, which is headed by this cardinal called Tarcisio Bertone, and uh, who, who worked in collaboration with, right with that guy who picked up that little girl, that guy called uh, Domenico Gianni, who is one of the most powerful people in the Vatican, even if he's unknown to the American public. He is uh, one of the reasons why uh, the, the, the Pope has not been able to totally kick out the, 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 the pedophile rings because he, together with Tarcisio Bertone, ran this uh, check. So you're the, saying uh, the, the Jesuits use the weakness that the, that the pedophile lobby created to come in and take over. You're saying they're two different factions. Yes. They're two different factions, but in the How end, do the Dominicans together. tie in? Aren't they a third faction? The Dominicans, unfortunately, have been infiltrated a long time ago. In fact, the, the guy who founded the Liberation Theology was himself a Dominican. So there is a conservative faction within the Dominican. There is also a conservative faction within other orders. And it's thanks to these conservatives who I have access to a lot of information, which I give in my book, Pope Francis, the Last Pope. So uh, there is good people in the Vatican. So are they doing this because they're weak or because they're strong? Why, are they, why is the church openly joining with world government? There, at this point, uh, there is uh, uh, no more church. I mean, now it's been completely taken over. The Jesuits are just uh, an emanation of this uh, globalist agenda. Since 1958, uh, the church has been compromised. This, all traditional Catholics know this. And when the, the, they started with the Second Vatican Council, the, the church was completely compromised. And uh, it's never been going back. After that, there was no going back because we had Freemasons Pope. I mean, we had... Uh, Ron Calli, who, who became a Pope in 1958, who was a Freemason. Then we have Montini, who was also a Freemason. These are, are not ordinary Masons. These are people who were connected to also the Zionist agenda, which uh, in turn was linked with the Jesuit agenda. So here we can't really blame only one faction for all the troubles of the world, as you know very well, uh, Alex, after all these years of doing excellent reports. 
it's, uh, it's something much more complex. There is a hierarchy structure that is compartmentalized, and of course, uh, they work.